Hi, my name is Beth Massey and today I'm going to show you how to connect to and use SharePoint data in Visual Studio LightSwitch. LightSwitch is a new development tool for building business applications for the desktop and the cloud. LightSwitch makes it easy to create data-centric rich internet applications. I already got an application open here that we've been building in this video series. It allows us to manage customers and their orders. I now want to provide a screen for our employees using this system to view and add tasks on our SharePoint site. Now I could of course create a new application and connect purely to SharePoint list data, but one of the cool things about LightSwitch is being able to connect to multiple data sources. So I'm going to add a screen that lets us work with SharePoint tasks right from our order system. So if you take a look, I've got a SharePoint site up here and I've got some tasks. So what I want to do, instead of having users to come all the way over here to SharePoint to manage their tasks, if they're going to be in the order system, let's just create some screens right in there. So the first thing to do is to go ahead and add uh, attached to an external data source. So if you're in the Entity Designer, you can click on this button. Otherwise, um, if you're on the Solution Explorer, you can just right click and say Add Data Source. And this time, I'm going to select SharePoint. Now I just need to get to our SharePoint site. And I'm going to use Windows credentials to attach to it. Okay, so now I'm going to have to select which lists inside of SharePoint that we want to import. Okay, so here I'm going to select tasks. And you'll notice that the user information list is already selected for us. The reason why it is is because almost every single list in the SharePoint has uh, user information stored on it, like who created and modified these lists. So list items. So that's why it's already included for us. So if you don't select it, it's going to ask us basically due to the relationships it's going to import it anyways. The other thing is is LightSwitch at this time does not support many-to-many -many relationships so the predecessor tasks will not be imported. Okay so let's go ahead and continue. Now when LightSwitch reads, uh, what LightSwitch reads in the list from SharePoint, you'll see some fields here that are uh, set to not show on the screen by default, like ID and content type ID. Um, these things are not, are, are set by default uh, to not display. So you'll see that uh, unchecked, okay? So LightSwitch is smart enough to say these are all internal fields and SharePoint content types that we don't need to display. The other thing I'm gonna uncheck is this content type. It's automatically set to task when we save this to SharePoint so I don't need to show it on the screen. Um, the other things that are kind of nifty here is like you'll notice priority is already set to a choice list so all of these values were read from SharePoint and um, LightSwitch automatically created choice lists for us so we only pick from these choices. Okay same with status so that's pretty cool. Okay I'm going to change uh, the start date to just a date instead of a date and time. I don't want to display the time portion of this. I also want to um, um, remove the or just basically not show the task group okay alright so the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the uh, entity itself here and I'm gonna because I'm not showing the content type anymore I'm gonna set the summary property to the title okay um, now what I'm gonna do over here is the user information list is I'm gonna set its summary property to the name. Okay, so that'll make a little more sense when we start selecting users, um, the assigned to and the users on our tasks. Okay, cool. So the other things we're going to need to do is I want to implement a couple business rules. Okay, so what I want to do is when the user selects the um, pr um, the status here, as remember we've got some choice lists here, when they select the status and they've selected not started or completed, I want to automatically select set the complete percentage to either zero if it's not started or one if it's completed. Okay, so let's go ahead and you, what you do is you select set the um, select the status and then we're going to um, drop down the right code button and go into this status validate. Okay and we're not going to need to actually raise any errors it's not going to cause a problem it's just going to um, basically uh, we're just going to set some defaults on another field. Okay so first we just want to check if uh, me.status is not equal to empty string. Okay we're going to write a little select statement here, select case statement. Okay, so the, oops, case. Okay, and select the case that me status is either not, oops, not started. 
Okay. Then we're going to just set the completed or the complete equal to zero. Otherwise, we'll set me dot complete equal to to one. Okay. So that's just going to uh, automatically set that percentage for us. The other thing we want to do is we want to set the default assigned to. So if we go back over to our, our schema over here, you'll see that there is the task is assigned to some user. Okay, so I want that to be def by default set to the logged in user in the system. So my SharePoint here relies on Windows authentication to connect to it. So I'll also want to use Windows authentication here on my light switch application. So I'm going to go click on properties, go into access control, and I'm going to select Windows authentication for um, this uh, application. Okay, so now when I log into light switch, I'll be the Windows user, and we can use that Windows user to pass to SharePoint or to query from SharePoint. So what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to just need to look up this user information based on uh, the logged in user. So I'm going to need to add a query. So let's right click and say add query on the user information list data source here or, or list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just call this get user by name. Okay. And all we're going to do is we're going to add a filter here where the account, okay, is going to be uh, equal to a new parameter. Okay, so it's going to be a little parameterized query. I'm going to need to create a new parameter. The other thing it's going to do is it's only going to return one, one a result. Okay, so only one user. All right, so now we can go ahead and use this in uh, back in our task. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to. You can do it right since we already have the editor open here. We can actually look and we can see that we have task underscore created. Okay, otherwise if you're in the the designer, okay, in the table designer here, if we're back over on tasks, if you go back over to your write code button, you're going to see it right here as well. Okay, now created is going to run any time a task item is created, whether it's here on the client on a screen or whether you create it on the server, that this code will run. So this is a great place to put defaults. And so that's exactly what we want to do. We want to set a default for the assigned to field. So me dot assigned to, and the way we're going to execute that query that we just wrote in code is we use what's called the data workspace. Okay, the data workspace you can get at all your data. This is our database data with our customers and our orders. This is the security data that actually holds our users and roles. And this is this team site that we just added. That's our SharePoint data. Okay, so I'm going to get user by name, which is exactly what we just wrote. And you'll see there's the account. Okay, the way we get at the account is we look at the application's user and there's a name there. Okay, and that's going to be the username that logged into the system. Okay, cool. So that's going to just set that default for us and that's going to be pretty nice. Okay, so now we're ready to create some screens, but I only want to show open tasks where the percent complete is not 100%. So let's go ahead and um, create a query on tasks this time. So I'm going to right click on tasks, add a new query. And we'll just call this open tasks. Okay, and this this filter will just be where complete is not equal to one. Okay, and I also want to add a sort. I'm going to add a sort on the due date ascending. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and add a screen. So I'm just going to click the add screen button right here. And I'm going to create a list and detail screen. And I want to do that on the open tasks. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, hit F5 to build and run this, and we'll make some changes here at uh, at run at, while we're running. But uh, let's take a look and see what we got so far. Okay, so my app opens the search customer search screen by default automatically first, but here's our open task list detail. And when we open this, there is our data coming from SharePoint. Okay, so we had those two tasks in SharePoint, and here they are on the screen. So uh, you'll also notice that uh, here is our user information list. This is our lookup table of users. Okay, so I've got some users in, in SharePoint there. Now I don't want to um, allow the user to modify the created by or modified by fields here because those are going to be automatically filled in by SharePoint. So let's go ahead and, and design the screen a bit. So it's a little more usable. So I'm going to do the created by. I'm going to change 
uh, to a summary control instead of a picker and we're going to move the assigned to up to the near the top let's do assigned to right under the title okay and let's make the description a little bit bigger I'm gonna scroll over here my window resolution is a little small but go under sizing height over here and then the lines I'm gonna make five Okay, so that spreads it out a little bit. The other thing I want to do is I want to, sh because we're sorting by due date, okay, um, you, but you can't see the due date here and in in, because this is a list box, I'm going to create a data grid here instead. And I'm just going to um, show the title and the due date. So let's go ahead and delete the fields I don't want to show in here. Okay, and finally, because uh, we have the details shown on this side of the screen, I'm going to, the data grid has add and edit buttons that show modal windows. I'm going to uh, remove these two, because the edit, you can just automatically edit right here on this pane. But then I'm going to add just an add button, so it adds a new row to the grid, and then we just go ahead and type in our stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and save that, and let's go ahead and add it. Or go ahead, let's let's delete one and let's change one. Let's say we'll change the priority to normal. And let's go ahead and, and add one, add a new one. Okay, so let's call this just, you know, just check on some status. And you'll notice that there's our assigned to field is automatically filled in for us. We can change it here on open tasks. Okay. Um, Priority, let's go ahead and select something. Remember our status, if I say not started, there's our complete is zero. Um, if I say completed, there's it at one. Okay, so we've got that working. Um, let's just test description. Make sure this all gets into SharePoint. And we can say like the start date, maybe tomorrow, and it's due maybe on the 9th, okay? All right, let's go ahead and save. That does an update, an insert, and a delete to SharePoint. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and check our, our SharePoint task list. We'll just refresh this. And now you'll see there's the check on status, and there's Joe, and now it's a normal priority. All right, cool. So it looks like we've got that going on. That's pretty cool. Um, now, what do we want to do? What I want to do now is I want to show how you can create a screen that just shows a single user's tasks. So this is, you know, showing all the tasks in all in the in the system that are current that are not complete, but and for across all users. Let's create a little screen that's uh, user specific. Okay, so I'm going to go over to tasks again and right click and I'm going to add a new query, and we're going to call this query my tasks. Okay, and the filter is going to be where this assigned to, right, account is equal to, and we're going to make a parameter on this, okay? Okay, so now we have, we basically are, have a parameterized query, and what we want to do is just show those uh, tasks that where the assigned to account is equal to the logged in user, and we're going to pass that in. Uh, also, let's go ahead and sort by the due date again. All right, cool, so let's go ahead and create a screen based on that. Okay, I'll, I'll do list and details again. And now we're going to say my tasks instead. And now what Light Switch is going to create for us is this up at the top here, it's created a, a, a screen parameter for us. Okay, so because it's a string, it's created a, a, by default a text box. But I actually want to fill this out programmatically. I don't want the user to have to type in the name of the user account. Okay, so what I'm going to do is you'll see there's the there's the screen parameter. It's now attached to the query parameter, and what we need to so all we need to do is fill in the value of task account, and the query will automatically execute. Now where we're going to do that is if you drop down the right code button, we'll see the initialize data workspace on the screen. Okay, and this is pretty easy. All we have to do is set me dot task account equal to me dot application dot uh, user dot name okay so that's all there is to it so let's go ahead and hit a five we could also make customizations to the screen how it looks and that sort of thing but let's just see if we can get the functionality correct
Okay, and because we're set to Windows Authentication on the light switch side, you'll see there's my username down in the bottom. I'm, I'm logged into the system. And so here are my tasks, okay? I, I am the one with the two tasks inside of SharePoint, okay? So that's how you can create or con uh, connect to SharePoint. Um, you can add, update, delete to list data. You can use the built-in lists like tasks in this case, or you can do this against custom lists that you create in SharePoint as well. You can also bring SharePoint in to your current applications that are already using data from other sources. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching.